Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. Um, if you're new, make sure to subscribe and check out the links in the description for my merch. The Autumn Snyder AFSP fund is always there and is my Twitter, the link to my Twitter profile also at DC. All right, there is a lot going on within the world of Warner Brothers and DC. And it is crazy how much is just coming to light and coming out and going on within this it's crazy it's just crazy all right so first of all Zack Snyder's Justice League was finally released in China just recently it has been breaking records it's been available I think I believe it's available on like every streaming platform that they have in China so it is just going through the roof with views um uh, Geralt of Las Vegas who provides a lot of good you know, updates and statistics and keeps us updated on all of this stuff. He said Zack Snyder's Justice League is currently the top streaming movie in Hong Kong with super positive word of mouth. So here it is on this list here. Um, you know, above Gemini Man and I'm not sure what that movie is. Wonder Woman 84, um, Endgame. Yeah. So... I'm not surprised that it's doing very well in China. It was also viewed 120 million views over the Migu video streaming platform. There's also, like I said, it's, um, I think it's available on like every streaming service that's in China. So here's the number down here. Of course, it's in Chinese characters, which I don't know, but you know, um, I'm assuming he did the like a translation or something to get those figures. But um, I believe too, I was seeing some numbers that when it was first released in China, it was like 8 million households or 8 million people had watched it within like its first, you know, couple of days being released in China. So um, it's, I'm not surprised. Like I said, China is a huge, um, China is a huge market for just film, the film industry in general. Obviously they have, you know, one of the world's largest populations, like the largest population in the world there besides India. So, you know, I'm happy that it was finally released there. They're some of the biggest supporters of Zack Snyder and his universe and his movies. And so I'm very happy that they're able to watch it now and that it's just blowing other movies out of the water. All right, so again, there's been a few articles that have dropped today. And one of them comes from Variety. And this is, um, <laughs> no, I'm sorry. They're both from The Hollywood Reporter. I'm sorry. The, the Variety article I'm thinking of is talking about Army of the Dead being in um, more theaters than expected. That's a different one. Sorry. There's been a lot coming out today. So a while back, there were stories coming out that, you know, Warner Brothers was going to develop or is trying to get started on this, you know, black Superman movie story with, um, they had, they had announced the writer, Tanahisi Coates, I'm so sorry if I said that wrong, and J.J. Abrams producing but not directing. And so now there seems to be more being said about what's supposedly going on with this project. Um, and a lot of people have been thinking that Michael B. Jordan um, is going to be a black Superman in the DCEU, but he shot that down recently and said that he's watching on this one. He's happy to have people, you know, he's flattered, but he's watching on this one. So, um, you know, it says who will direct. And <laughs> the article is basically saying that they are um, very determined to find a black director for the film and that black directors who have been um, talking to Marvel as well, that Warner Brothers is also trying to talk to those same directors to see if they'd be interested in taking on this, um, this movie. So yeah, it says right here that, but insiders say Warners and DC are committed to hiring a black director to tackle what will be the first cinematic incarnation of Superman featuring a black actor, with one source adding that putting Abrams at the helm would be tone deaf. So they're figuring if they have a black writer, a black Superman, they also want to have a black director. Um, and this is just talking about possible, you know, black directors that could be, you know, just possibilities. Um, Barry Jenkins, um, 
Regina King, Shaka King. Um, of course, they named like Ryan Coogler, but he's going to be doing obviously Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. So I don't think it, that's even a possibility at this point. Um, it says Coates isn't expected to deliver his Superman script until mid-December. So that's a long time from now. And it also says um, in the when this story first came out, it says that it said that it was possible that they would be trying to, you know, they would be exploring a different version of Superman, not Kal-El. But now it's this article is saying that it would be a black version of Kal-El. Um, so I don't know. It's just the problem is that. With what has come to light regarding, you know, what Ray Fisher has started bringing, has started bringing to light regarding what happened on the set, uh, the reshoots of Justice League and what Nina Turner um, had shared about her experience working with Jeff Johns on Krypton and the Superman versus Lois. Those, ex those things coming to light are kind of, you know, and what we know happened with Cyborg in Justice League, like, and knowing that they, you know, Zack wanted to make an Adam movie set in China and all of that. This whole issue of, you know, being in, not being inclusive enough and not being representative of diversity, um, Zack did that, but Warner Brothers was really, I mean, obviously we saw what happened with Cyborg's character. With Superman and Lois, there was problems with, you know, that writer and producer getting enough representation on screen and of course the comments about jeff john saying that you know with krypton that superman can't have a black grandfather or an ancestor but yet over here zod's family does all of those things coming to light people might say well why are you complaining like people are saying that wb is not being inclusive enough well here's their chance to do that no this is just this seems like they're only doing this to try to save face and to show like no no no, no. see we are inclusive. We're going to have like, you know, a Latina Supergirl. Um, here it says that they're developing a Latino Blue Beetle movie, which that came out a while back too, and things like that. But, you know, if you're not making a... If you're not making these decisions for the right reasons, then it doesn't matter. And then it makes you even look even worse, especially what has come to light about, you know, all these things that are going on behind the scenes. Um, so yeah, here it says, sources tell The Hollywood Reporter that Coates is crafting a Kal-El in the vein of the original Superman comics and will have the protagonist hail from Krypton and come to Earth. While the story is currently being crafted and many details could change, one option under consideration is for the film to be a 20th century period piece. So like it says that if this is actually happening, it's not expected for the script to come through until mid-December. Um... It's just ridiculous to me that they're trying to push this just to try to make themselves look better when they have a perfectly good, amazing Henry Cavill who the fans love and respond to that they're just like pushing to the side. And like this is very disrespectful to him. And, you know, in the article, it also says it's unclear whether or not it's going to be connected to the current DCEU or if it's going to be its own thing. But if he's also supposed to be Kal-El, then I don't know how that's going to work. I really don't know. It's like, why can't they do this and still give Henry Cavill more like a movie? You know, the only opportunity I, sing, I see at this point of seeing more of him is in the Black Adam. If, you know, Dwayne Johnson gets his way with that, which I really hope he does. But it's just like Warner Brothers is just giving the middle finger to everyone. Zack Snyder, Henry Cavill, the fans... Like, they just don't care. All they care about is making themselves look better, and it's actually making themselves look worse. Now, another article coming from The Hollywood Reporter today about Warner Brothers is actually on the executive side. This is Toby Emmerich, the chairman, Warner Brothers film chairman. There are reports that he could possibly be looking for a new job. <laughs> With 18 months left on his contract, is Warner Films studio chairman Toby Emmerich exploring job opportunities? There are no official, like, names quoted in this article, so I, it's, I don't know. Um, 
It says, while it is far from clear that Emmerich will leave the studio after more than 20 years, sources tell The Hollywood Reporter that David Geffen, 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 in recent weeks placed a call to Netflix co-CEO Ted Sarando, Saran, Saran, Sarandos to inquire whether there may, might be a possible role for Emmerich at Netflix. <laughs> of all studios to call, like, really? Um, this gives some background on their, their work history. But then it goes in to say that um, sources close to Emmerich say he had no knowledge of Geffen making any calls on his behalf. Others with knowledge of the situation say top Netflix executives did not see a place for Emmerich at the streamer. A source close to Sarando says no call was placed to him and there was no discussion about a position. And of course, of course a Netflix spokesperson declined to comment. Um, so again, it was rumored that he was going to be departing in December, but then that's kind of when we found out that like he was given control over HBO Max, Warner Brothers, like deciding what gets the green light to either go to HBO Max or to go to theaters, which goes back to some recent other recent reports that um, there were that theaters wanted Zack Snyder's Justice League, but that apparently Toby Emmerich put a stop to that and didn't allow that to happen, which would make sense because he's the one who's in if he was given the authority to you know say what goes to hbo max what goes to theaters um you know what's an hbo max original just like zack snyder's justice league is that would make sense that he i mean he'd be able to make that call if that's the authority he was given um and it also makes sense that theaters would want zack snyder's justice league because i mean the whole past year where theaters were closed most of the year and then when they finally did open up what big movies were going to theaters that were bringing in people, even with limited capacity, nothing, you know, probably, I mean, we got Wonder Woman 84 at the very end of the year, but, you know, this year when theaters are trying to get back on their feet and trying to get back up and running and bring in more people again, or bring in people at least regularly, um, or try to get back to a good place, this would, I mean, the the most anticipated thing would bring audiences in. And obviously, theater chains recognize that. So it would make sense for them to want a huge, you know, movie that's being talked about and has a lot of attention surrounding it and has been, has had this fan campaign for four years, you know, around it. Especially trying to get back on their feet after being, after a pandemic where theater, some theater chains closed or, you know, some locations closed down. Theaters would definitely want something like that. And I'm not surprised that Toby Emmerich possibly, you know, most likely shot that down because it makes him look bad. That's the whole reason why they didn't want the Snyder Cut to happen in the first place. That's why their first offer, that's why Warner Brothers offer to Zack was just release your unfinished version. And HBO Max was like, no, we want everything that you have. Um, that's why they never, you know, released it before. They could have done it before HBO Max was a thing. And that's why we don't have, you know, hardcore, like hard official numbers from HBO Max on how well it did. Samba TV was reporting all of those numbers and some other third parties. But as far as HBO Max, um, you know, Warner Brothers just wants to make it, just wants to like completely ignore how much of a success how much of a success it has been and I'm glad it's doing well in China. But again, it's important to point out that it's pretty much the US department of Warner Brothers that is doing all of this. Um, other like international Warner Brothers teams um, are not doing that. And also, you know, HBO Max is not to blame, it's Warner Brothers who is doing all of this. So it's just so much drama so much going on it's just crazy it's crazy how much warner brothers is just like wanting to like feud and war with their fans it's really strange um and with zach even in a recent ign i think it was ign um an article where zach was saying that he feared that he was going to get sued if he supported the release the snyder cut movement um which is ridiculous like, first of all, I want to know what they would sue him on. I don't know if it would be some kind of breach of contract or what. But, like, fearing that you're getting sued for supporting your own movie that was deceivingly advertised by the studio, um, that's pretty sad. 
I'm glad that didn't happen to him, but I think Warner Brothers probably, I mean, there must have been a reason why he, why he thought that that could have been a possibility. But say Warner Brothers would have tried to do that, I think it would have looked worse for them. <laughs> because like I said, they pretty much used his movie to falsely advertise what we got in theaters. You know, they lied to the fan base and the cast about what was really going on. And so I don't think that would have turned out well for them if they had tried to do that. But again, like I said, I just wanted to like cover some of those things that have been going on. It's been pretty crazy. If you're on Twitter, you know, show your support for Henry Cavill, Restore the Snyderverse, all of that. At this point, I really just want to, <laughs> but at this, I don't know, it's hard because I don't want Zack to have to deal with this studio anymore unless major changes are made. If Toby Emmerich does leave, you know, that could be an open door for something to, you know, get better. But at the same time, what if they just hire someone with those same view, same thing, like same things, just like Anne Sarnoff, she replaced Kevin Sujihara, but she's not making any better decisions about their movie, you know, about DC. So I don't know. I want to, uh, we're going to support Zach on Netflix. You know, Army of the Dead comes out in select theaters on May 14th. Um, Cinemark theaters are going to have it. And I think, um, what's the other theater chain that's going to have it? Okay, so yes, um, Cinemark, one of the country's large theater chains, has, uh, theater chains has agreed to screen the movie. It's booked at 200 Cinemark locations. And Army of the Dead will be the first Netflix film to score a wide release at a major theater chain. So we'll all, all, it will play at roughly 600 theaters in total, including IPIC, Landmark, Alamo Drafthouse, Harkins, and Sinopolis. Other major circuits, specifically AMC and Regal, will not be offering the film. But it is going to be the first um, Netflix movie to have a wide theatrical release. And so in theaters, it's May 14th, and then one week later on Netflix, that's when it comes out on Netflix. May 21st, sorry. Um... So that's pretty awesome that like Netflix is doing is opening the door for this to possibly happen with other future movies and they're starting off with a Zack Snyder movie. You know, they obviously have a lot of faith in him and what he brings to the table, which is why when he pitched this to them, they're like, "Yes, let's go with that. We're go write that movie. We're filming it right away. What else can you do with it?" which is why it's going to have a prequel and a um animation, animated series. So I'm very happy to see Netflix going all out for Zach and recognizing what he brings to the table, what his fans do for him and how they support, how we support him. So it just sucks how he and Henry Cavill are being treated and the fans, you know, it just really sucks. And I don't blame Henry Cavill for not doing the um, cameo in Shazam because David F. Sandberg had said that there was a plan for him to do the cameo at the end of Shazam, but that he, you know, it ended up not happening. I don't blame him because look at the way the studio treats him. They want him to show up for a cameo in Shazam, which didn't make a lot of money, but, you know, they probably knew that it wouldn't, but they want him to show up to sell, you know, but then they don't even want to give him another movie or give him a significant role in other, no, like I wouldn't have done it either. I don't blame him. But anyway, I'm going to stop rambling now. Like I said, it's just been a lot going on. So, you know, thanks guys for watching. Support Zach, you know, on Netflix. Henry Cavill is going to be on Netflix with another season of The Witcher. Jason Momoa is going to have a Netflix movie coming out this year. It's just like, and Gal Gadot. It's like everyone from the, <laughs> is going to have Netflix movies coming out. Um, but apparently they don't want Toby Emmerich. So, <laughs> you know, makes sense. Um, anyway, uh, thanks for watching guys. Um, don't forget to leave a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new, hit that notification bell and we'll see you guys soon.